you've tuned in at exactly the right time. This is a review of the ELAC Unify Reference Stand Mount Speaker. Well, it's, it's exciting on a number of fronts. First of all, uh, it's an Andrew Jones design. And he usually, not always, he usually knocks it out of the park. And he certainly did on this one. First off, it has an all new six and a half inch woofer. It, this speaker is a three way design, by the way. It has a six and a half inch woofer with a cast aluminum chassis. The concentric driver, though it looks similar to others in the Unify line, uh, it's not because it has a, also a cast aluminum chassis, the magnet, the spider. Uh, there's a bunch of differences between the concentric in this one and the other Unify speakers. It also has a new crossover network. It is a bi-wireable design. And it sounds freaking amazing. <laughs> it might be mistaken for the ELAC Unify 2.0, the UB52. And it's not that speaker. This is the new model. I'm going to put them up side by side so you'll see the difference. But that six and a half inch woofer, that is, I think, the star attraction because it really transforms the sound of this speaker compared to its little brother, the UB52. Now the price, let's get to the price right up front. So the reference model here is $1,000 a pair. And the UB52, which is still in the line, is $600 a pair. That's a big difference. But based on my memories, at least, of the UB52, this speaker is an advance over that model. Now there's also a reference, a Unify reference tower speaker that's $2,000 a pair. And there's also a Unify reference uh, center channel speaker and that's $600. The way Andrew Jones approaches designing towers and stand mounts within a line is that they should sound, like this line, the reference line, is that they should sound pretty much the same. It's just that the tower version can play louder with lower distortion and may have a bit more bass extension and impact. That you get for double the price for $2,000. But the overall sound of the speaker is the same in the stand mount. So unless you need to play loud or crave that low, low, low extension, you could just get the, the stand mount and save a lot of money. The finish options are two. You can get it with a satin white front baffle with a light oak veneer or satin black front baffle with walnut. In both cases, it's a vinyl wrap finish. And it's not the best vinyl wrap finish. I wish it was a little nicer, a little more real, but it is what it is. But it's the sound that counts. And I would say this speaker here, <laughs> the reference is just, yeah, I think it's, it's got a lot going for it. I, I'm gonna put up the complete specifications right now. Now, I used two amplifiers over the course of this review. Uh, the Black Ice Audio F11 tube amp with push-pull EL84s. I have a review coming up for that very, very shortly. Um, and also the Gato Amp 150. That's a high power, 150 watts channel, class AB amplifier. Beautiful, beautiful amp. I will link to the review right there. In any case, with the black ice amp, with the tube amplifier, the sound, the sound of the amp is actually very similar to the sound of the speaker. Very smooth, but very high clarity. I wouldn't call it like uber resolution or uber transparency, but in terms of you're feeling like you're hearing everything you need to hear, that amp and this speaker do that very, very well. Yes, but it is 19 watts a channel. With the Gato Amp 150, I could play this speaker really loud. I was playing the Black Keys new record, what is it, Delta Cream, Dream, Cream. Anyway, great record. I've been sort of out of uh, the Black Keys for quite a while. I liked them in the in their really early records, the, the long middle period, I was kind of bored with them. But this one, this is a nice record. And the kick and the power of that record played loud with the Gato 150 over the reference speakers. I was absolutely digging it. And the guitar crunch had just the right amount of crunch and, you know, grit to it, which is, you know, part of the recording itself, part of the sound of electric guitars. Yeah, I was totally in and I kept pushing it louder and louder and louder and just enjoying it more and more and more. So I'm listening and then suddenly it hit me, 
that the reference was reminding me of another speaker, and that speaker was the KEF R3. Great stand mount speaker. Uh, it's two thousand dollars a pair. It has. It also has, though. Here's the thing. It also has a six and a half inch woofer, aluminum woofer. But the R3 has a five inch concentric instead of the four inch that's in the reference. But overall, the sound was sort of bringing me back, saying, "Man, that's what this speaker sounds the most like in a way." I, yeah. Okay. So I didn't have the R3, but I do have. KEF LS50 Metas on hand, so those I pulled out for comparison. That's a $1,500 a pair speaker. And you know what? That was an easy comparison because the differences were pretty stark in that the reference is a fuller bodied sounding speaker. There's, there's actually very little comparison there. Though the, the LS50 can go down in the bass, it doesn't have enough warmth to the sound compared to the Unify reference. And the overall, let's say, openness of the sound was superior on the reference. Now, I still think that the Meta beats the reference in terms of transparency and fine detail, that sort of clarity. Yeah, I think the, the Meta still has that. But the overall experience of listening to the reference is just a, you're, it feels like you're listening to a much larger speaker, and it isn't that much bigger. This, this speaker's low bass is very, very impressive. Now, the spec says 41 hertz. I don't think there's a plus or minus 3 dB. But anyway, it says 41 hertz, and I played some test tones, and I was definitely getting down to the low 40 hertz range in my room. Uh, but I would say, more importantly, getting there you know, from 70 to 60 to 50, it was very, very smooth. So the, the bass is nicely controlled and very fast sounding. Ben Harper's uh, Fight for Your Mind album, I think it's a pretty old record, but anyway, there's a mix of acoustic and electric tunes, but the acoustic stuff on that record is just, just sounded so right, like Ben is in the room. That's what this speaker does. It has that kind of you are there feel to it. Vocals on Ben's and many other recordings that I played just sound correct, fully there, and his guitar, and he's such a great acoustic guitarist. I love that record. So I like contrast. So next up I played Symphonic Pink Floyd. And yes, I know that that could sound icky, <laughs> but it didn't. It actually works. It's a wall of sound. And Alice Cooper doing Welcome to the Machine, and that could really be a disaster, but it works. Actually, I didn't know it was Alice Cooper when I was listening to the track. So this, you know, that one of the things I loved about this speaker with the symphonic Pink Floyd is the scale of it. It seemed big. This imaging was massive, deep soundstage. I could almost trick myself into thinking I was listening to Magnapants, like like point sevens, which I don't have here right now. Or I would have done the comparison, but yeah, this speaker does size, image size, very very well because it just disappears. It just lets the music out and there it is. You know what I do have here is a, for a comparison that kind of makes sense is the Klipsch RP600M stand mount speaker. It has a six inch woofer, it's a horn loaded tweeter, it's known for its dynamics, it's live sound. How would the ELAC reference handle that comparison? The short answer is very, very well because the ELAC had just more oomph to it, more oomph, more power. Definitely. Now it's about twice the price as the Klipsch. But even in terms of dynamics and playing a record like, oh, this, this Cure record, it's called Mixed Up. It's alternative mixes to their classic tunes. It came out in, I think, 1990. It's a fun record. It's a groove record. You just want to dance or, for me, jump around in my seat. And you know what? The, the reference did a better job of that than the Klipsch did. Yeah. Definitely. The clip sounded a little rougher around the edges, actually, a lot rougher around the edges. Um, cruder is another way of saying it. This has been a review of the ELAC Unify Reference Stand Mount Speaker, the UB62. Yeah. I think it's almost like if Andrew Jones could figure out what I want and put it in a speaker that sells for $1,000 a pair and it's a bookshelf speaker. This would be it. <laughs> you know, it's that good. I'm, 
I don't know. I, I like a lot of his designs, but I think there's something really special about this one. Speaking of special, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing to this channel. And to do that, it's super easy. Just hit that button right, right down there. When you do, hit the bell so you'll be notified every time there's an amazing new episode. Speaking of amazing, check out the Patreon, which can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac, and there's a link to that directly below. But while you're here, check out the playlist, and in case you haven't noticed, there is a playlist of just speaker reviews, and I'll link to that right up there. Um, and then I also have playlists for electronics reviews and headphone reviews, not to mention, but I will music reviews, plus playlists for interviews. And I'm back to doing face-to-face -face interviews, and I couldn't be happier. I hope you've watched some of them recently. And now I can say my work here is at last complete. So thank you again for watching, and I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.